Hello and welcome to your Astrological Vibrations for Friday, November 3rd, 2017 by Gaia Blooming. I am Mimi and our energy mantra for today is I witness the sacred healing power of love. And that really is the theme of the day, the sacred healing power of love. Today, we are building into a big full moon. Uh, full moon in Taurus, late tonight, 11 degrees, major healing degree. It's actually happening at 10.23 p.m. Pacific time, 1.23 a.m. on Saturday morning, Eastern time, so late tonight. Um, but even as we build into it, we got some interplay with yesterday's astro, which I'll get into just a little bit because I wasn't able to do a horoscope yesterday. And... Um, strong, super strong Venus energy, which is really interesting because this full moon is in Taurus and Venus is a co-ruler of Taurus. So there is a very strong Venusian energy that is supporting us today. And Venus, her highest and best, her favorite is the energy of love. And, and of course, feeding into the love, the harmony and balance and justice that comes along with that. But ultimately, Venus is all about the love. So, as we build into the full moon, getting into some of these Venus connections, we have Venus in conjunct Chiron and Venus sextile Saturn. So, yesterday we had uh, Chiron and Saturn square. And I talked about that through that week, how there was some major uh, potential karmic healing going on. If we could show up in our lives, show up in our truth, there was some major karmic healing going on. Known or unknown, stuff is always happening beneath the surface. And sometimes I think it's better when we don't know what's going on because if you don't know what's going on, then you don't let your brain get in the way and be like, I have all this information for you and this is what you should do and all the different parts of your brain. So whether you know about this healing that's going on or not, just know that it is happening. If you are one of the lucky ones <laughs> that knows what's going on, you may really be feeling this Venus in conjunct Chiron energy. In conjunct is where we're not really seeing eye to eye. Chiron in Pisces, retrograde, is going through healing some major old stuff, deep, ancestral, past life stuff. Now, like I said, if you know about it, there may be some of these things that you cannot yet look upon with the eyes of love. And if that's the case, then stop aiming your focus and your direction in that and take Venus, <laughs> use Venus as an example, look upon something that you can look upon with the eyes of love. Um because that will give you the strength to allow this continued process of healing and unraveling to go on. As Venus connects with Saturn, that's a reminder that that's part of your responsibility, is to keep re-aiming, realigning. We have 11 degree energy today. 11 to me, one of the messages of 11 is alignment. Realigning with the energy of balance, of love, of harmony. So part of your responsibility in this Find something that you love. If it's looking at your cat, look upon your cat with the eyes of love. If it's, you know, watching the ice capades. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Watch the ice capades with the eyes of love. Whatever brings you into love, that is really going to support your healing process. I witness the sacred healing power of love. That is the energy of the day. And as I was looking at the astro today, one um, one thing that came through was this quote, and I don't know if it's somebody else's quote or mine. It came out of nowhere, so it might be mine, but I'm not sure. But the quote was, if love is the question, love is the answer. And so that's where we want to keep redirecting ourselves in and through this energy as we build to this full moon. Now, also speaking of Venus, um, Venus making several connections today, so Venusy. y uh, we have Venus actually opposite Uranus in the place of where we had the last full moon, that last full moon in Libra. Venus is hanging out there with Uranus still. Uranus is moving pretty slowly. But I do find that really interesting. So you may have a reverberation, <laughs> a remembrance of what came up that last full moon. And this may actually be able, this might be a thing like, okay, whatever went for, on for you that last full moon, so it was about a month ago. What's today's date? So around like October 2nd? I don't know. I don't remember the date. But about a month ago, what went on for you? And was there anything that you weren't able to look upon with the eyes of love at that time that maybe you can shift now and liberate now and look upon it with the eyes of love now? There may be some shift. There may be some liberation. There may be some understanding. But just think back about a month ago. What was going on about a month ago for you? 
and how has that shifted? I also think it's really interesting with full moons to take a look back about six months ago. So for some reason I have in my mind that the last, the Taurus full moon was April 26th. And I don't know, I, ha I didn't look it up to see the date. That's the date that keeps popping in my head and I don't really know where it's come from. So, but right around that time was when we had the new moon in Taurus. What have you grown and built into your life? What has manifested since then? And the thing is with a full moon, full moon energy is really like harvest energy. We are meant to harvest what we have manifested. But my feeling is that a full moon is also kind of a reminder. Some things take longer than six months to manifest and that's okay. Nothing to be ashamed of. And when it does take longer, it's like a continuing, a little oomph <laughs> that we're adding to that process. Oh, I remember. I remember this thing that I'm loving into being. That's one of the things that's so important to, to know with this full moon. Taurus is an energy of production. Taurus is where we build things into physical presence. And we have to remember, as Scorpio is on the other side of it, the highest power is the power of love. But often, I don't want to say the only thing that can defeat love because I don't think it can really defeat love. But one of the things that can challenge our feelings of love is the feeling of fear. And so things are either built on love, passion, or out of some level layer of fear going on. It's going to be the things that are built on that foundation of love that are sustainable, that last, and that are ultimately fulfilling. It's going to be the things built out of the energy of fear that eventually crumble because fear is, fear is false. <laughs> what is fear? False evidence appearing real, right? So we don't want to build things upon the foundation of fear. We want to build things upon the foundation of love. And so this is an opportunity with this full moon in Taurus to be like, oh, I see it and I love it, and I believe in it. And just keep watering your garden with that energy. The Sabian symbol for the full moon in Taurus, which I guess I took the little scrap of paper out. Oh no, it just fell down. Um, for Taurus, 11 degrees. A woman watering flowers in her garden. How are you watering your garden? Whether your garden is your physical body or your garden is anything that you're working on manifesting. How are you watering it? And is it aligned? Is it aligned with God, spirit, universe, love? Or is it aligned like a crazy human? We go this way, that way, all the ways. Is it aligned with something else? Is it aligned with fear? And this is a chance to get back, get back into that energy of trusting in the power, the sacred healing power of love. This is a really, really powerful full moon. It feels very powerful being at 11 degrees, a master healing degree. But what is the most mastery healing power? It is love. So just saying with that. Um, speaking of that, so Taurus is one side. Scorpio is where the sun is when we have this full moon energy. And we can't forget this Scorpio energy. Part of this Scorpio energy in this is regeneration, is rebirth. And so even as this is a full moon, which is harvest energy, there is an opportunity to be rebirthed in our commitment to our power, to the power of love, to this energy that we're wanting to bring forth. Um, when I did something, <laughs> one of the things that I did about this full moon, I had this song, uh, Riser by Dirk Bentley stuck in my head. And in it, he happens to be a Scorpio, but he says that he's a riser through anything that happens. He's a survivor. He's a riser. And I'm really feeling that through this full moon energy that we are being called again to rise up in love in the sacred healing power of love, um, through, through this energy. What I also find really interesting is that this full moon isn't playing alone. We actually have Neptune feeding in at 11, 11 degrees as well. So the sun is going to be trying Neptune, and the moon will sextile Neptune at 11 degrees. And I was, I was looking, you know, I like to get into the Sabian symbols, because I was like, oh man, here's more of this really deep spiritual stuff that's going on under the surface. Neptune is also retrograde in Pisces unwinding, undoing these long-held karmic contracts that have come to an end. It is time for those to be done. Um, but we have to really maintain our integrity, 
our spiritual integrity, our love integrity as we walk this path. And that's the thing that it says in the Sabian symbol for Pisces, 11 degrees, was men traveling a narrow path seeking illumination. Really, it is, it is kind of a narrow path between fear and love. And it's really easy to veer off and start yourself, find yourself going one way or another. And we just have to always remind ourselves, wait, what's the course and what's the goal? What's the course and what's the goal? Full moon in Taurus. Eye on the prize, eye on the goal. Keep reminding yourself what it is that you're wanting to build. What is it that you're wanting to grow in your garden? And let that keep blooming for you in your life. And be very vigilant about noticing. Oh, I veered off. That's okay. I'm human. This happens. Oh, I veered off. Okay, that's okay. It happens. It's, you know, it's noticing the path. And also noticing when we do veer off the path, there may have been a mushroom or something that we had to see when we veered off the course. Don't get upset at yourself for veering off the course. But it really is about following this course, following this alignment. So as this moon and sun connect to Neptune, there is that. There is also a very deep intuition energy that's going on in and through this full moon. So listen in to your dreams. Listen to your intuition. Listen to how you are being guided. And keep looking upon it with the eyes of love. Um, yeah. So the other thing that I want to say from the other Sabian symbol, because why not? Um, the Sabian symbol for the sun is at Scorpio 11 is a drowning man being rescued. And what they talk about in here is like the deep concern of the social group for the safety of individuals. Um, and a man, a man risks his life to save another. And this is love based on a sense of responsibility. Um, and a vivid sense of interrelatedness. And sustained by this love, this individual may be more secure in venturing forth again. You know, that's one of these things. That's where Neptune also plays into this. You know, we are all interconnected on one level or another. When you do the best for yourself, you are doing the best for everybody. And I think that's what we have to remember as we focus on love. Keep doing your best. Keep living up to your best. And there, there's always another level that we can move up to, but keep committing to that and know that as you heal, as you level up and layer up, it is helping everybody else. We are all interconnected. It is supporting everybody else. And that's a beautiful, wonderful thing. Commit to your best. Commit to the sacred healing power of love in and through you. All right. So cards. I think that's enough stuff to talk about. Um looking at all the notes yeah I think I think it's good enough okay uh if love is the question love is the answer I really like that okay so today ha, there may be some things that we cannot yet look upon with the eyes of love that we do not have the heart power for it's fine sometimes we're just not ready if that is the case find something that you do love to focus on to help you move through even if what you're focusing on is yourself like that's a wonderful thing to like focus on yourself with the power of love oh my god that could be really beautiful that could even be this card i have the slowing down card which is you know this is this turtle who is at home within himself focus on that foundation focus on that foundation of love at home in and for yourself i do have some pretty crazy cards <laughs> don't compromise do not compromise spark I've had sparkles on me since getting sparkly earlier this week these sparkles will not go away <laughs> um do not compromise the power of love moving through you do not compromise it and if you find that you're looking upon something and it's bringing up these other things in you that is an opportunity to shift your focus you are not ready to go there at this time um I have the control card in reverse my feeling is that there, this is part of some of these old paradigms that are being unwound, that are happening, known or unknown, at this time. I also have the isolation card. This may be part of the process today. You know, as these things are being unwound, these old things that have maybe controlled us, that have maybe pushed us in one direction, maybe these things that we have thought about too much, there may be some release, there may be some tears, but I always love this card because it talks about the rainbow and the gold in those tears and how healing that energy is. So if you have to cry, if there is some release, remember full moons also heighten emotions. And even though Taurus is not overly emotional as a sign, Scorpio can be very emotional. Pisces can be very emotional. With them feeding in, you may get the emotions. But you may get the emotions. You may get the feels. But if that does happen, 
trust. Like, cry it out. Let yourself be released. That's probably some of the release of that Chiron, Saturn stuff um, coming into play. And then I asked for some redemption. I was like, wow, those are, those are some intense cards, you know, like isolation, control, slowing down, the miser, and compromise. And so the redemption was the dream and participation. Keep your eyes focused on that which you truly love. I love, there's a Rumi poem, like, which is like, basically that, like, stay focused on what you truly love. It will not lead you astray. Stay focused on what you truly love. Participate with what you truly love. Body, mind, spirit, soul. That's what I always get from this participation card. Engage with it. Body, mind, spirit, soul. And no, it is coming into being by your engagement, by your participation, by the essence of your true, sacred, love, healing power. Um, to finish up the sacred power cards, I got a very Scorpio card. I got intimacy. And I'm not going to read all of this, but I think that there are some parts of here that are really beautiful. In the past, there has been some fear around intimacy. Fearing to share personal thoughts, feelings, body image has created a mindset around acceptance of how intimacy should be and how it should be approached in the future. This confusion has allowed a use and misuse and abuse of power in your relationships, resulting in miscommunication, bad breakups, and abusive relationships. If you are in a relationship right now, you're being asked to look at how you share information. Is there mutual respect? Are you both being heard? Are you giving or just taking? And if you are single, now is the time to acknowledge and address any issues surrounding the loss of power, allowing you to open your heart to others in the future. Take the time to nourish and nurture your body. Wear clothing that is physically appealing to you. Create and make memorable moments with loved ones and open lines of communication to support, support different or difficult topics and conversation. And the affirmation is, I am open to new experiences. I honor my body with love and respect. The sacred healing power of love. All right. Intimacy. Intimacy. All right. That is it for today. There is enough love in the world for you. The better it gets, the better it gets. Book a reading if you want to dive deeper into your personal chart, and I will, most likely, see you tomorrow. Namaste.